Hi, good morning and welcome to this week's edition, <coughs> excuse me, this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, as we are doing right now, and it will be available to you later to watch at your convenience. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. Uh, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbor, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you might think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, so similar to your state library. So we provide services and training and programs um, to all sorts of libraries in the state, all types of libraries. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes come on the show to talk about um, resources and things we're doing through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers from um, well, from Nebraska and across the country, actually. And that's what we have today. With us today is Amy Jo Olson. Good morning. Hello. And Hello, and she is from uh, right here in Nebraska, from our uh, Bay Wright Public Library in Ralston, Nebraska. And she's going to talk about their centennial celebration celebration that they did. Um, I don't even know when was that. How long ago did, did this actually happen? It was uh, December thirteenth, twenty twenty two. It's only last year. Oh, okay, only last year. Awesome. Yeah. We have so many libraries. We have lots of libraries that are having a. Um, 100 celebr 100 year celebrations and they keep coming up and i can never keep track of which one is when <laughs> <laughs> yeah. who's, do, who's happened who's still going on yeah. <laughs> um seems to be that time so um i'll just hand it over to you amy and let you talk about what you all did and in ralston for this okay great thank you so much krista um so welcome everyone it's good to not actually see you but <laughs> Glad to have you here. Uh, so today I will talk through um, our library centennial celebration and how and kind of a unique approach we took to the preparation for that. Um, a side note, I am a hand talker, so you will see my hands motioning around. It's just, it's part of the way I speak. You'll just have to bear with me. Um, so again, I'm Amy. Uh, I am at the Baywright Library in Ralston, Nebraska. I'll talk a little bit about Ralston as well. If you're not familiar, it's kind of a unique, it's a unique community, um, both by situation and um, location. So I'll talk a little bit about that and why that was important in how we decided to approach this program. Uh, but again, the library celebrated its centennial. Uh, it's 100 years of having a library in Ralston in, in 2022, and I was proud and excited to be part of that. So I'll talk about that. Here we go. Um, so today I'll give you a little bit of the project overview, how we um, set up the project and executed it, and then what we got out of this project that I did. And it was it was really a research, um, a kind of a research foundation project, and and I'll I'll explain how that all worked together. But just because it's research doesn't mean I mean anybody could do this. It's it's very um, it's a very it's a time consuming process, but it's not a complicated process. So, you know, don't don't think you can't redo this just because it's it's termed research. Uh, but uh, and then I'll share our project results. So what we got out of it, what went well, what didn't go well, because that always happens anytime you do something. It's part of looking back and, and assessing and then uh, what we're looking at moving forward with the information we gathered and um, maybe future projects to work on. So you can see this picture here is actually from our centennial. We had our fireplace going in the library um, and we've been awesome since 1922. So that's our, <laughs> our little motto. Great motto, yes. There. <laughs> and it was Christmas time. You can see some Christmas decorations. Of course, yeah. Yeah, you know, little lights, little, some bows. Um, okay, so 
why did why photos and memories what does that have to do well you know if you think about a centennial celebration that's really what you're celebrating right is a hundred years of memories um memories efforts initiatives books in the community the community in the library that's that's the exciting part of of celebrating that 100 years um so the city opened its first library in 1922 and in 2022 again we marked 100 years with the city supporting a public library um which as many of you know is is the really important part the support mm -hmm. of the library um, so that's that's exciting. Um, we are actually, I believe, in the fourth. I think we are currently in the fourth location in that hundred years, if I remember proper correctly. So um, that it started as a in the basement of the city hall um, is where the the library began, and that's where they opened. And then they've moved a couple times since then. The building that we're in now was built in 1998. Um, so we're about 25 years into that building. Um, we'll see where that takes us, but um, that's where we're at right now. So the photo voices, the term photo voices is, it's a research method. And so I'll describe it very briefly. What it is, is asking people to bring photographs that are meaningful to them in some way that relates to the project at hand. So it's been used before in areas like healthcare. So uh, let's see, terminal cancer patients were asked to bring photographs and talk about those photographs and how they were meaningful either to their lives or to their, their treatment. Um, and information was gathered and, and um, shared with the public. It's also been used in uh, other public administration situations like this, working with the city would be a public administration situation. It's also been used um, with specific populations of people, um, homeless people, houseless individuals, uh, people who identify as transgender. It's been used to allow those people to fully participate in the research process and bring something of themselves into it and really, really connect to it and offer offer personal information. Um, not necessarily personally identifiable information, but mm -hmm. personal, uh, personal stories. Um, it encourages storytelling is the, is the basic idea behind it. So our overall goal for the centennial was to create some kind of visual display for the community where they could see photographs from people's lives in the community, um, photographs that were meaningful to them for family history reasons. Uh, we had one gentleman who I'll talk about a little bit later who has visited 48 countries and so wow. I know, I know he's lived in Ralston. I think he's been in Ralston for almost 50 years. He's been there more than 40 years. And um, I think he's almost to 50. And he has visited 48 countries in that time. So he brought us some of his photographs and and talked about them. It was, it was pretty wonderful. Um, but we were gathering oral histories, gathering photographs, and then showing them to the community, kind of like a mini art show as part of this celebration. I'm gonna stop here for a moment and see, does anybody have any questions right now? Uh, let's see. I'll, um, talk, I don't, I'll talk a little bit more about right now. Yeah, 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 anytime you have questions, go ahead and type in. You don't have to wait till the end. Um, just remind everybody, yes, I just wanna be thinking of something you wanna know more about or you're curious about, go ahead and type it in. Um, I'll also mention while we're paused here too that these slides will also be available afterwards. <clears throat> with the archive. Um, and if you just send me a copy, we can put the link up to them. Yeah. Um, so any of the details or information on here, don't have to worry about trying to scribble it all down. Um, you'll have the slides um, later on. Um, but I don't see any questions at the moment, no. Okay, if, if I teach as well, so I understand if somebody has a question, it may need to be answered right now, and that's <laughs> cool. I'm good mm -hmm. with that. So yep. feel free to I, interrupt. I am good anything. at interrupting. I do it all the time. Okay, good, good. <laughs> All right. 
So moving on. So photo voices, Ralston. So I talked a little bit about photo voices as a research method, and these pictures are um, some that were shared with me. They were shared with a uh, by a newer resident of the community, uh, um, who she and her partner just purchased a house. You can see the little house there that they bought. Um, it's adorable. I love it with its little car drive under car park and the and the deck out front. Um, in part, they said that they moved to Ralston because they love the parks. Um, a photo of the park, one of the parks is there, that's Oak Park in Ralston, and then they were able to have pets, so their little cats are there too. Uh, I love these photos, I think they're great. Uh, but anyway, so I talked a little bit about photo voices as a research method. It's a way to really connect with the people involved in the research and to gather deep information, deep personal stories and quotes and really emblematic of whatever the experience is that, that those people are talking about. Um, in this case, we were talking about residents' connections to the Ralston community and to the library. Um, so it was great. It was I loved all the stories that I was able to hear and that we now have recorded are amazing. And you know, if you don't record those things, eventually they're lost mm -hmm. because move away or they pass away or and then and then you've lost that history so it was great to be part of that um, so the second piece of this is the city is a system so if you think about a system the basic definition I think from Merriam-Webster I looked it up quick last night to make sure I had it exactly correct um, it's interdependent pieces that make up a whole so if you think about a city you've got city leadership you have city workers you have people who live within the city you have people who travel to the city to work you have people who own businesses but don't live there um, you have multiple city entities so and every person comes with a unique background and a unique experience and a unique and unique needs you know they all some people are really interested in the parks and making sure that the parks are the best they can be other people are really interested in the library and making sure that the library is the best it can be other people just show up to work and they go back home and they are more interested in the roads and the number of people who are coming into their business and all of those concerns and viewpoints are valid and important so one of one of the things we were doing here is gathering information from people um, about their unique perspectives viewpoints and needs um, but all of those pieces work together right so all of those pieces have to work together to make the city function as a system and Ralston is unique um, in a couple ways. So Ralston is an independent community. It has its own government, its own public works. It's responsible for the roads, the sewers, the library, the um, everything that goes into running a city. However, it is also landlocked within Omaha. So it's 1.65 square miles in the south central area of Omaha and it's landlocked, it can't expand. There's no outward growth possible because it's sandwiched on three sides by Omaha and on the south by La Vista. So no expansion possible. There's no way to uh, make the city larger or to increase the tax base by doing some of the things like um, annexation or expansion. Um, mm -hmm. La Vista has been able to expand. Omaha annexes property. Um, there, are, there are multiple ways that cities do that and Ralston doesn't have that capability. So they're working within this 1.65 square miles to support an independent city of about 6,500 residents. That is, that is unique. Mm -hmm. Somebody, one of my um, one of my participants said, you know, Ralston is an enigma, and it really <laughs> is. <laughs> it's this strange mm -hmm. um, thing within the middle of Omaha. You don't think of a city within a city, but that's exactly what it is. Um, without without the ability to expand, so they have to work with the land and the people that they have there, 
and try to draw in new businesses and try to draw in new revenue streams. And there have been multiple ways that they tried to do that um, throughout history. Some of you may know about the Ralston Arena that was um, opened in 2012 and then Baxter Arena opened less than three miles away just like 18 months later. So we have an arena glut all of a sudden, and that was supposed to be Ralston's big, big funding source, and it it hasn't worked out that way. So there have been some significant challenges within the city, mm-hmm. uh, and there there have been some some hurt feelings and some anger um, from the people in the community related to things like that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was interesting to gather gather that information and, and see that but anybody have questions about Ralston or about the idea of the city the inter, interdependent pieces working to to make the whole function uh, basically <laughs> yeah, I think it is something that's, that's unique with and it's a lot of the uh, effect of Omaha doing all this annexation of different areas around them and and annexing but then saying oh but you're also your own thing well <laughs> yeah how do we deal? Why are we doing this? What's the? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And where does? How does this work? It's it's a it's and there are a couple legal legislative efforts that have made that even more. Um, Omaha, any any city in Nebraska over ten thousand people has the ability to look at the land next to it as long as it's not another community of more than ten thousand people and say, you know, we'd like that. It's ours now. <laughs> So, and that's how annexation works in Nebraska. That's yeah, much. Yeah, that's all well, it takes. Yeah. That's a very, that's unusual for mm-hmm. cities just to be able, just to say, we, we, we would like this now. So you might ask why Ralston was never annexed mm-hmm. because Omaha grew out around it. Um, well, in the process of interviewing people, I discovered that in the 60s, I think 64, the early 60s, the mayors of Ralston and Omaha got together. The Ralston mayor went to Omaha and said, um, we do not want to be annexed. Can we come to some kind of an agreement where you won't annex us? Hmm. So gentlemen's agreement, handshake, you know, um, they the mayor of Omaha said, as long as you don't expand, we won't annex you. So that agreement Mm -hmm. resulted in Ralston being landlocked the way it is. is, Yep. And it can't be any more than it is. Right. Without, but as long as it wants to maintain its uh, independence, independence. Yes. That is of primary importance to the residents. If you, if you talk to them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so there was this gentleman's agreement. So Omaha annex, it just kept growing and went around Ralston, <laughs> um, but Ralston was able to maintain its independence that way. Mm. Yeah. Anybody questions about that? I don't see anything right now, nope. Okay. Yep, I'll keep an eye on things, yep. All right. Type in anything okay. when you think of anything you wanna ask or comment about, go right and type into the question section, everybody. All right, so overall, the goals, so why did we decide to do this? I mean, I've sort of talked around that question, but what were our actual goals and objectives? So I have them listed out here. Um, and this is this photo is a picture of our longtime mayor. So the mayor is in the sort of green suit jacket. He's the shorter of the two gentlemen. And the other gentleman is a local, um, he's a bank president in the area, but he is really involved in our parks maintenance and and in a foundation that is located and and services Ralston. Mm-hmm. So he's a kind of a a gatekeeper donor type person. Um delightful man. Um but yeah that's who those two people are. Um so our overall goals were to celebrate the library centennial. So a hundred years is a long time. That's a lot of support. That's a lot of community coming through the library. Uh I f- someone brought me pictures of kids standing in a in a row moving books oh yeah the old library out into a truck to be moved to the new library um so it was like the what do they call that the firemen's where they just pass everything down and put it in the 
I don't remember what that's called. The but handoff, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there were kids there, and I, there always seemed to be kids there. Uh, the community prides itself on being family oriented, um, so it's it, the kids were expected to be involved. So they helped move the library um, in the in the 90s, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, the pictures were were fantastic. Um, so our other goal is that Ralston actually maintains a city archives and it's a nonprofit group, uh, but they, so it's not, the city doesn't maintain it, it's a separate organization, hmm. but we wanted to add more library history to the archives. One of our um, previous library directors is really involved in the archives, so there is a good amount of information about the library that was a priority for her. Uh, Jan Gorman is her name, and mm -hmm. she's been in the library in the city for a really long time, um, and she's now heavily involved with the archives. So she was actually instrumental in us kind of gathering materials to display for the centennial. She she was a huge help, um, but we wanted to add more, you know, updated oral histories, new newcomers to the community we wanted to gather information from them why did you come here tell us about how you ended up here things like that um, and then to access information about the community's city related wants so their needs and wants so what what do people want from the city how does the library be continue to be an essential city service uh, you know, how do we, how do we, I, I always talk about the library as an essential community, um, need, an essential community service. So how do we, how do we continue to be that? We want people to see us as important and valuable and, and, and something that the city can't do without. Of course, uh, yes. So how do we continue to do that? And Ralston's great. They're very supportive. We have a great community, um, but we want to continue that. So <laughs> asking for information was the key. So the objectives, so the short term, what can we do right now to help meet these goals? So my original goal was to gather oral histories from 30 community members. I almost got there. I was really close and I'll talk about that in a little bit. <laughs> um, I was so close. And then to produce some visual data showing the needs of community members related to Ralston, the city and the library. Um, I'll talk more about how I did that. That was successful. Um, and it was it was cool to see people come and look at it and find their thing that they said on the picture. And, and that was kind of, it was very neat. Um, and the other objective was to hold a celebration. Um, it was great. We had a balloon arch, we had cake, we had, you know, it was, it was <laughs> Kind of a reception it was very informal we just invited the community in um, took a lot of good pictures um, it was it was a lot of fun so that's where we started um, and it it became a very large project <laughs> but um, that was that was in part because of of me so that was my own fault <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I mean it sounds like something so simple but yes when you get down to the actual you know okay how do we pull this off yeah. 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 And if you think about the time that it takes to schedule 30 people and then to interview them, some of my interviews lasted three hours. Wow. Yeah. Because people love to share their story. Talk about history. Yeah. 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 And I love it. And so I just like, am, you know, tell me more, tell me more. What about this? Um, so it's, it's a combination of, of, I don't know. It's it's either the best or worst possible combination, depending on your viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll get. Well, oops, there we go. All right. So what did we what? So what did we gain out of this? What did we end up with? So the results. Um, I almost got to thirty. I got twenty-seven oral histories. Um, that I will probably eventually expand on. Um, we'll see, we'll see where I end up there, but 27, 27 was a good number. That mm -hmm. was, it was, we got, I contacted some city leaders. I talked to people who had been there a long time, people who had not been there as long, um, teachers, uh, 
retired library directors, um, people from from all walks of life. Uh, it was it was great. I I loved every minute of it. If you are a person who enjoys history or just likes talking to people, mm -hmm. I can't recommend this more. It was an amazing opportunity. Um, so what did we collect? We collected 73 artifacts. So I use the word artifacts because it I didn't only receive photos. I also um, collected newspaper articles. Uh, the city no longer has a newspaper, um, but it did for a long time. And it shut down relatively recently. So I talked to the woman who wrote for them for, she wrote for them for 27 years, I think. And she came and brought her favorite newspaper articles and then talked to me about them, which was awesome. Um, personal papers, so I had one lady come in with her personal, she kind of keeps a journal, um, but she types it like it's a, um, almost like it's a, a publishable story. Um, and they were great. She was willing to share a couple of them with me. So her memory of the day that JFK was assassinated, she was in a school room, she was a, a teacher, so she was teaching and her her memories of that day in the community. Um, another woman brought in documents. Her mother had been a library director um, there in Ralston, and she talked about, there was a, a major tornado that came through the area in 1975, and the sirens went off, and her mother was at the library doing a story hour for 50 children. There were 50 children at the wow. library. It was an after school story hour. So she's doing this. She's the only staff member there. Remember, this is 1973 um, or 1975. And the, the sirens go off. So she has to gather these 50 children and take them to the basement of the library. <laughs> so she sat in the basement of the library with 50 kids for hours until somebody came and said, it's safe to come out now. What an amazing story. <laughs> That's I, like, you can't, you couldn't make that up. That's an amazing story. Um, so it was, it, so it was things like that, things, writings that people had come up with, um, old things like old library cards, old library bookmarks, um, summer reading program flyers from 30 years ago. Uh, it was it was awesome what people came up with. Oh, the materials to raise funds to build the building that the library is now in. So How that old is the current building? Uh, I, 25 years. So uh -huh. it was opened in 98. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was great. So we collected 73 new items, um, which was that's that's history, right? It's that's awesome. So, and then, so we also, I was able to use the information that residents talked about in relation to their city related needs and, and wants and how the library can maintain its status as an essential city service to create word clouds. So most of you probably already know that there are internet sites where you can go and type in a list of information and it will create a word cloud for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they, all different shapes, right? You can make them. Um, so I tried to choose thematic shapes. So like a gavel for the city <laughs> leadership requests, you know, um, so that was kind of fun. And then that was displayed with the photographs um, and people were really interested in those. So what came up most? What came up? People in Ralston really want a grocery store there, by the way, hmm. that's, the, that's the big one. They really want a grocery store. Um, I'm not sure how that would how that would work given the given the land restrictions, but yeah, um, a grocery store is very high on the list. Uh, maintaining the parks very high on the list. The parks, um, Ralston is a designated tree city, and uh -huh. there are a lot of trees there, and the parks are beautiful, and there's there's a good number of them for the for the um, that 1.65 square miles. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, actually. Um, we also had 75 people come to our our 
public celebration. Um, ate cake, got their pictures taken, looked at all the things. Um, there were some tears. People were happy to talk about their photographs that were displayed or their items that were hung up. Um, it was it was kind of moving. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was great. So that was those were the results. Um, so what went well? So the city leaders received positive feedback about both the project and the library. Uh, you know, people people said, you know, we're glad that somebody's doing this. Um, I'm so glad somebody's collecting these stories and this information. Um, yeah, so it was, it, we gathered really specific recommendations like a grocery store um, <laughs> to be considered in future city planning. Um, mm -hmm. And there, and I'm in the process of writing that all up in a paper that can be used as like, okay, what did people say they want? And when you're talking about 27 people, I don't know how generalizable, it's not generalizable actually. Um, it's just not because that's such a small number, but it gives us a place to start for future surveys um, and things like that. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so it was a, it gave us a place to start anyway. Um, we did successfully meet almost all of the goals and objectives. I did not get to 30 interviews, but I was I was close. Um, I feel pretty pretty good about getting to 27. And then you know just connecting more fully with our some of our patrons with a few of those people, at least a few of them. And I would like to connect more deeply with more in the future. I am. A longtime Omaha resident, but I do not live in Ralston, and I have never lived in Ralston. Mm. Uh, so I'm an outsider, um, mm. which pr gave me some challenges. Those were <laughs> those were you know like people eyed me a little suspiciously, like what do you want? What are you doing? What are you <laughs> really doing? <laughs> you know, um, yeah. So yeah. that was you're that an outsider, was, but you work at the library, their library, so yes. Yes, and which gave me an opening. And I, my, my approach was always, I really just want to get to know the community. I'm really here to just gather information. I, I promise you, I'm, I'm very kind. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it gave us, it gave them a chance to share things with us that we otherwise wouldn't have known. Um, just the stories that we heard were just phenomenal. Um, such great stories. People's, I love listening to people's memories. So um, yeah, but we moved beyond the checkout process. So, you know, normally your interaction's pretty limited and we had a chance to move beyond that with, with at least one set of people, um, which was pretty cool. Yeah. All right, so what didn't go well? There are always things. So the project ended up being much larger than originally. I was like, oh, interview 30 people, no problem. And then <laughs> it, it, became it became large um so i again i'm not from ralston made some of those connections difficult i did have some people helping me facilitate connections which was very nice of them um so i had some some residents some longer term residents facilitating that um and then transcribing, so I audio recorded everything. So transcribing, if you've ever done any transcribing, it is very time consuming, um, especially when you're talking about long interviews. So I had, how many yeah. hours? I think I ended up with 77 hours of recordings. Wow. And that is a whole lot of words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a whole lot of words. And if you have money, you can have somebody transcribe it for you. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know what library life is like. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> we don't have money for those things. Um, so I I ended up doing it, and it, it was it was pretty time consuming. Um, I also had some difficulty recruiting. Um, you know, like I said, I'm I'm an outsider, and that people were reluctant to schedule. They were a, a little suspicious. I had a couple people flat out tell me, um, "No, I'm not going to talk to you." And I was like, okay, no problem. Do you mind me asking why? Mm -hmm. And some of them would elaborate and some of them wouldn't. Um, yeah, uh, some of the elaborations were were interesting enough that I, I held on to, I made little notes and held on to some of that. Like, I don't want to talk to you because um, that'll be valuable for me in the future. Mm -hmm. So I did hold on to that. Um, and and you, do you feel comfortable elaborating on any of those reasons? It'd be interesting to know sure. like why people didn't want to talk about the history of the library. 
Sure. So we had one longtime resident, and I'll talk a little bit about this person. I wonderful. I very, oh, sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, wonderful person, very involved in the community, very involved in the library, really mm. a, a solid part of our the community there, um, who said, you know, I don't think I'm really comfortable talking about the history. My parents did not have an easy time here in the 70s. And so I don't think I want to talk about that, which makes me want to talk to her more. Right. <laughs> Yes, like, wait, you need to tell me more about that. Yes, and so, so to, so, right, so to get a full picture, you need the full picture, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it can't just focus on the happy, joyful memories. You need oh, the whole that's thing. something, yeah, absolutely. That's very important and is a big <clears throat> issue yes. going on in the world today, we'll say, yes. diplomatically. Yes. Um, the whole thing. Your bad <laughs> history is just important as the good history. And you yes, need it is. Yes, it is. Talk so, about all of it to understand and learn from all of it, the good and the bad. Yes. But I right. understand too, though, something very personal, it's up to them when they're ready to talk about it to someone. Yep. Yep. So eventually I'm hoping we can circle back around mm -hmm. and I can I can gather some of that, either through a second project or a mm -hmm. um, you know, I something I yes, I'm hoping to gather more in the future and I'm hoping she'll be part of it. Um, mm -hmm. But she was not the only person to say that to me. There were a couple of people who were, and and then they'd kind of question themselves. You know, they'd say, "I, but I keep living here, so, <laughs> uh -huh. so I must like it." There must I'm be some. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was that was very interesting too. Mm -hmm. um, and that, although that wasn't part of this centennial celebration, I didn't make those things part of this. It it will be part of my my eventual writing about this. Um, they won't be identified in any way, of course, mm -hmm. but I, it'll you know I'll note that there were some people that didn't want to talk to me for this reason. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, yeah, it'll it'll come up later. Yeah. Um, so photo voices. It proved kind of a difficult sell. Um, people were happy to talk. I had people who were thrilled to share their histories with me, but they did not care to share photos, which hmm. I was kind of surprised by. And maybe a generational issue. Hmm. Um, you know, I especially I mean, I have I have young adult children and my 18 year old i think photographs everything mm -hmm. and that's just very much a part of the way they exist but i think older people are a little more hesitant that is not part of the way they communicate always um mm -hmm. unlike younger people so um that'll be something that i'll need to think about going forward too um mm -hmm. yeah and think about the way I approach it and the way I explain it. Um, but yeah, I had people who flat out were just like, I'm not interested in that part of this. Okay. So I adjusted a little bit and we, we moved forward. Um, so I asked for other artifacts. That's how we ended up with, with a lot of other things. Um, yeah. So that was, that was a tough, a tough point. Um, and then, so going forward, I've mentioned this a couple times. So what comes next? Um, I will complete the paper that I was talking about that will help, hopefully help future or guide future efforts by the city to gather information from community members. So what did this small section of people say they want? Does that apply to a larger cross section? Can mm -hmm. we gather maybe questionnaire data um, saying, yes, no, this is ridiculous. I don't know where that came from, whatever it shows, but it can, it can help guide writing those questions mm -hmm. um, be sent out to the larger community. Um, so, and then the other piece of it is that I desperately need to write my dissertation. I am, <laughs> and I have all the information. I just need to, as I say, put myself in a chair and do it. Yeah. And so, so people know, I mean, Amy, she works the library, but she's got this whole other life too. I do. 
you are working towards your PhD. I am. I yes. am. Um, yeah. And so this though, so this project then is 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 a part of that. It it is the research piece. So uh -huh. it's yes, yes. So it is the research piece. Um, oral histories, fortunately, don't require IRB approval. So mm -hmm. I can use the recorded oral histories. Um, and I will not identify anyone, you know, there won't be, sure. yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm careful about that, so, but so, yeah. So someone is asking, I know this is kind of, well, not off topic necessarily, but so what is your actual degree, PhD, you're going for, going to be yeah, so like official, like long title for it or whatever? <laughs> yeah, no, um, uh, communication studies is the, oh. is the subject area, so mm -hmm. this, the dissertation will focus on the city as a system and how if the pieces aren't talking to one another, how that affects the overall operation. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so if those interdependent pieces don't work together, how does that, how does that affect it? Um, but the, the opening to the dissertation is a, I, I've written this part, it's probably a 20 page brief history from the founding to current day so mm -hmm. it's like i said brief it's definitely abbreviated but it's um it goes yeah it kind of shows the evolution of the town um mm -hmm. how it became the the small city that it is within a city now so um, it's about the city of uh, it of uh, uh, the whole city not just the library's history yeah dissertation i mean yeah yep it is it is so I've done I'll do some yes I have to do some work in the in the archives but a lot of that a lot of it is available online now so you can mm. piece it together um, which is which makes writing a dissertation much easier than it was 30 years ago <laughs> oh gosh yes <laughs> that was very interesting yeah yeah and useful um, definitely well I hope so you know you have to be able to say this is why i'm doing this um, and i and i hope that it's useful uh, ralston is pretty unique so mm -hmm. but I, I do feel like a lot of the challenges the challenges that they are facing are also being faced by these mid-sized towns these cities large towns small cities in mm -hmm. rural areas too yeah i think i think some of the the challenges and people people are people right um they you know um communication is not always our our strong point <laughs> yeah. we're not very good at saying what we want sometimes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm hoping it'll be useful we'll see um and then the other piece is so we haven't yet physically moved the materials that i gathered to the ralston archives so we need mm -hmm. to make that happen um, i have everything put together we just haven't physically made the move so that's a future a future thing um, and then I would like to do a follow-up project and um, maybe going back to some of the people that I interviewed and then um, mm -hmm. focusing on some of the newer community members too we have a our demographics are rapidly shifting so if you look at census data since the 2010 census our population is pretty rapidly diversifying it was almost completely white identifying folks in 2010 and now we have 17 percent um latinx identifying people so that's a pretty rapid shift and our population is also aging um our our white identifying population is aging and our non-white identifying population is young mm. so uh, it's kind mm. of a uh I don't I don't think that's unique to other places I think that is, yeah. is valuable and important to consider um, yeah so that is I am at the end this is a photo I'll tell you a little bit more about the photo here this is a photo of our celebration you can see our balloon arch we were very <laughs> proud of our balloon arch um, <laughs> and this is our little um, fiction and, and non-fiction stacks leading back there. We put the arch on the stacks. I know some of you are probably horrified. Uh, <laughs> this is, is this some of our staff, some previous um, leadership? Uh, yeah, so it's just a picture of us. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. people have okay. questions. 
Um, I, I have time yeah, at the end. Be, uh -huh. for yeah, we have plenty of time. Yes. Um, and if anybody does have any questions, yeah, type them into the question section. Any questions, comments, um, thoughts on what they did here more? You want to know specifically about how things were done or um, how this information was gathered and how it was presented? Uh, go ahead and type into the question section. We have plenty of time to um, get through any of the questions you have. And for anyone who came in late, I know we did, I do see we have a few people that did. Um, the slides will be available afterwards. Um, Amy, you can send me them when we're done here and they'll get posted up with the uh, recording of today's show as we always do. So um, this is great. It was so good, so cool to hear about what you were doing there. Also, I know, as I said at the beginning, we've had uh, quite a few libraries having 100 year celebrations. Uh, many libraries maybe started at the same time if, uh, it was, you know, Carnegie Libraries, that kind of situation, uh, that, you know, very similar timing. So we've yeah. seen lots of celebrations happening, but this, you know, this photo voices uh, concept, um, putting that together was, I thought, very uh, interesting and, and, and unique. Like you said, Ralston is unique, uh, that putting those two things together. Um, so I was very, you know, I was very interested to hear how all this happened. Yeah, I'm very, I'm, I feel pretty fortunate. I actually um, was digging through research articles one night, late at night. It was probably two o'clock in the morning. Um, and full disclosure, I had had probably one, maybe two glasses of wine at this point. And I was digging <laughs> through research articles and I stumbled across photo voices. I had never heard of it before, but I started reading about it and i emailed our library director in the middle of the night <laughs> and said there's this thing that i think we could do i want to do this for the 100 year celebration i want to gather this information and i sent her this big long email and the next i i don't know maybe i went in i only worked there part time so maybe i went in a couple days later and she's like okay so tell me about this <laughs> Yeah, re explain this again. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I don't think I get it. And I was like, oh, my email's kind of incoherent. Sorry about that. This is what I want to do. <laughs> and she was really supportive. So she was like, yeah, yeah, do it. Go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I presented it to the Library Foundation and the City Council and the Library Board to get approval to go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, I guess, I left that out of my presentation, but that was an important piece is to mm. get the people to go ahead and do it. Um, yeah. So someone wants to, is asking too, is, was there any cost involved in this besides your time? And, you know, of course it's cost. This yeah, I minimal. Um, I, the biggest actual cost was framing photographs. So, and that um, we actually got, we have a foundation. Oh, to make them nice to be displayed and all, right. sure. Yeah. Right, so the display was the actual cost. I mean, paying, I mean, I got paid. <laughs> but I mean, so you've got hourly wages there too. Yeah. But like I said, I- Extra, just your usual. Right, yeah. right. There was some extra. When I got to the point where I was doing a lot of um, transcribing, there, there was some extra, there were some extra hours in there. Um, but I, yeah, it was not, I'm pretty fast. Um, so it wasn't a huge expense. Um, and you could always, there are, there are different ways to do that too, where you could minimize that hourly wage costs. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would say the biggest expense was the display. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. this is something that has been on the mind of the library in the town for a while. They knew this hundred year, the centennial celebration be coming up. So budget or funding would be already thinking about, okay, what are we going to do and what do we need to pull off whatever we're going to do. Yeah. And we actually ended up with, we ended up with more funds than we needed. Um, and we had backup funds. So if I was, I was surprised people in the archives were very enthusiastic about this project. Oh, sure. And they had money that they were willing to to use for it. Um, and then our foundation did, um, it was, I asked for $800 is what I asked for. Um, and that covered everything, it did not cover my wages. That mm -hmm. my wages didn't come out of that money, but it covered everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there were additional, in fact, I think we were under budget. Nice, okay. Yeah. So, so photo voices, the whole concept here is that people, um, 
picking a photo that is meaningful and then talking about it. And that's yep. where you get photo voices, you know, the whole thing. So how did you, so you, you had to, you still incorporated the people that didn't want to provide photos though. I did. So was there, how was, how was that then presented if there wasn't a photo to go along with their so I pulled, I would pull out a quote from them, something that went along with the, either the being part of the Ralston community or being, or related to the library. So mm -hmm. I would pull a quote or two from their interview and I made big, mm -hmm. like half sheet sized this person and then put the quote underneath it. So mm -hmm. like, one one of the teachers one of the teachers that i interviewed her quote was um something like people want to be part of this community it's a great community for kids and families mm -hmm. so it was things like that you know it was it was all the it was all the happy good feel good things <laughs> <laughs> because that's what this particular thing was about sure. And that would be something that you said in your write up and your when you're writing it up on a white paper or in your dissertation that whole and here's the things that didn't go as they were supposed to because as you know right. not everything does and here's so here's the outliers or whatever that didn't follow the <laughs> exact um, right yeah do you know someone said what percentage i mean how many was it a lot that didn't want to do photos like what percentage of the people that you there actually were quite a few, there were quite a few people who resisted the request for photos um or they would allow, they would bring items. Um, so we had one person who had, was very involved in our community theater there in the, in the city. And so had like every program going back, I don't even know how long, um, mm -hmm. since the community theater had been in operation, I think the early nineties is when it started. And wow. so she had stuff, no, it had to be longer ago than that. I don't know, anyway, it was a long time um and had all of the programs so i took photos of her programs sure so i arranged them on the table and took a photo um i think some people didn't know what to share i think there was some sure. a little confusion about um and so going forward in the future i would be very clear about these are the types of photos i'm looking for instead of leaving it maybe more open i would be more specific about the types of photos I wanted. Right. So something yeah. related to the library or that, yeah. Right, right. Because I think that was part of the hesitation is a little bit of like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which was on me, um, mm -hmm. not on them. But I, I percentage wise, I would say, I would say at least half of the people were like, I don't think I have photos for you. Yeah, they might not have any. Yeah, that's yeah. true too. Yeah, if they don't, it didn't take a picture of something happening at the library, or something library related. It's like, yeah, yep. the town or my house, and that's nice. Right. But <laughs> if right. we're focusing just on the library, sure, sure. Right, right. Yeah. And I, I expanded it initially. I was like, we're going to talk about the library, and then I realized that the, when you think about it as a system, the library is part of a much bigger whole, and mm -hmm. so you can talk about the whole and and not just the the specific piece. So right. I explained it a little bit as I went. So we do have a question here about the um I guess what you what you gathered the photos, um the audio on um, the recordings and everything. Uh and you did mention that you still have to get some stuff into the Ralston archives, correct? Um the question is are any plans do you have any plans to include some of the content into your catalog for ongoing access? Like would these also be things that would be like you know, um, items in the available to the library, library catalog. Um, then that makes me, it makes me think is how to people search the Ralston archives too. So two kind of questions. What about putting it into your catalog and how do people find this stuff now that they're in the, R, the Ralston's own archives? Right, so unfortunately the archives is not digitized at all. Mm -hmm. They do not have any kind of online access. There's no digitization. Um, mm -hmm. So there's not, it's one of those things where it's run by volunteers. Mm -hmm. So it, and people who are not archivists. So there's a, so mm -hmm. it is a building with lots of stuff in it, with, headed by people who are very passionate about this, of the keeping of the stuff and the history. Mm -hmm. um, but 
yeah, there, it's not, there's no access once it goes in there. So that's a really good question. Um, it, it would be great if the library could do some digitizing and have mm -hmm. like the historical photos and things like that available. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, we don't currently have any plans for that, but that is a really, really good idea. And mm -hmm. I will take it back. Yeah, is there, if you do go to the archives, do they have some sort of a catalog database in-house thing where they can find, oh, are you, you're looking for? Yes. You know, they have it organized there in the building in some way. Yes. And so if you want to know, hey, where are these pictures, you know, 20 years from now, they'll be able to say, yes, they're down that hallway or they're in that yeah. on that shelf. <laughs> and they do have audio recordings already. So they have some audio recordings that they keep. And I'm, but I'm not sure how they have those organized. What format are they in? Yeah. For... I don't know. So mine are all digital. And I'm, yeah. I don't, I suspect theirs are not digital mm -hmm. um, because they're from, from probably at least 20 years ago. Yeah um yeah so I, i'm not sure. or something yeah yeah probably probably you remember when you used to sit with your cassette player at the radio to record oh yes <laughs> probably <laughs> something like yes. that <laughs> um so if you're gonna so you have these digital recordings of these um oral histories so how are you going to get them in the archives or is that still to be determined yeah it well so i can either I'll probably put both the transcriptions and the audio recordings mm -hmm. so that if someone's looking for something, they can still look for it through the transcriptions. Mm -hmm. uh, but the audio recordings, they're just, uh, it's digital files on my phone. They can be transferred to another, um, they can be put on CDs or on, on some wow. other physical media if we needed to do that. So is there any restriction then, since you're, you say you're going to put these things in the archives, um, you could also put them in the library's catalog. There's no yep. rule that you can't. Right. Sure. Yep. They might be in both places. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, we just hit 11 o'clock uh, yep. Central Time. Does anybody have, so that's all the questions we had that had come in. Um, okay. Um, if anybody has any last minute desperate questions you want to ask of Amy about this project, uh, go ahead and get them typed in. We can um, answer any of your questions. We won't get cut off here just because we're hit the top of the hour. Um, I also yeah. included my contact information. Yes. That's my cell phone that's on there. Feel free to text me. Um, but yeah, so if you think of something later that you're like, oh, I wanted to ask this, or we're gonna mm -hmm. try to do this, we need, I need to ask more questions, um, feel free to reach out. Yeah, absolutely, yes, contact Amy at any time. Um, oh, hey, we got, uh, thank you, any, thank you, Krista and Amy, great ideas. And uh, ah, Tony says, Shelton Public Library is celebrating 109 years, and he's Ooh. currently planning for next year's celebration. Ooh, great. So maybe uh, you'll use some of this information. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like I said, everything, we see, keep seeing these hundred something yeah. <laughs> celebrations coming up. I know Wahoo just had theirs as well. I can't remember all of them. That's awesome. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, while we're waiting to see if anyone has any other questions, I'm gonna bring presenter control back to my, over to my screen here. So I can do my little wrap up, but I'll keep an eye. If you have any other questions or comments or anything, definitely get them in and we will have Amy answer them now or reach out to her um, with her contact info that was there. Uh, so as I said, we are recording the show and it will be on our main page and click here to go to our Encompass Live page. Um, if you use whatever is your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, it's the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. We haven't trademarked it or copyrighted or anything, but, <laughs> and you'll get our main page or our archive page. These are upcoming shows for the rest of the month and our archives are right here. Today's show will be at the top of the list. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording's ready. Should be done by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest. As long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me, we'll have a link to the recording on YouTube and um, Amy's slides will be there as well. Um, while I'm here, I'll show there is a search feature here. If you want to search and see if we've done a show on anything you're interested in, you can do that and see what we've done. We've, you can do the full show archives or just most recent 12 months. You want just something just very current. 
Um, and that is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because, as you can see, it's huge. Uh, this goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. So we're in our 15th year. Wow. Uh, so just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything that you do watch. Um, many of our shows will be um, great, stand the test of time, still be good, useful information, but some things will become old, outdated. Uh, resources and services may have changed drastically. Links may be broken. Um, people will work at a different library than they worked at 10 years ago when they presented to a, a, for us. So just pay attention to those um, dates. Everything has a date when it was first broadcast live, so you'll know uh, when that information is from. Uh, we do have a Facebook page that we use for Encompass Live. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Here's a reminder about logging in today's show, information about our speaker. Um, and then we do, where's last week's? There we go. When the recordings are ready, I post on here as well. So um, if you like to, you can give us a like over there. We also use the Encomp Live hashtag on Instagram and Twitter. So if you are on any of those, I don't know where else we are thinking of going social media wise at the moment with things that are changing, but that's where we are right now. So give us a like in those various places or uh, be signed up to the Library Commission's mailing list too. So I don't see any other last minute desperate questions. Amy, do you have any final words you'd like to share? Uh, nope, I don't think so. Again, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to talk to you. Um, mm -hmm. So please reach out. Absolutely. Definitely. All right. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you, everybody, for being here then. Um, I hope you join us for, well, um, you'll see I've got this month's shows here. I'm working on shows for August, so keep an eye on the calendar. Um, so I hope you join us next week. We're going to talk about a very Nebraska-centric topic, the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. Um, there have been some updates to it. We did a show about this last, about a year ago, and with our most recent um, legislature, uh, there are a few tweaks that happened to Open Meetings Act, and Scott Childers will be with us. He's our director of our Southeast Library System. He's kind of our uh, main expert on the topic, and he will be presenting about that um, next week, so please do join us for that. It's kind of a companion show to, and I'm going to, our a previous show he did with, with me on the Nebraska Public Library Laws, Chapter 51 and beyond. Open Meetings Act is a Nebraska statute, uh, but it is a lot, so it deserves its whole own show. <laughs> so we did do a show. Those are the recording and slides about the um, other um, public library laws. Uh, and then next week, we'll be talking specifically about the Open Meetings Act. So please do sign up for that. Any of our other um, shows we have coming up. So thank you, everybody. Thanks, Amy. And hope we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>